So I'm going, to be, I'm going to be talking about a new graph database management system that we're developing in my group in the University of Waterloo. And I'll tell you in our cider papers about the overall goals and vision of the system and uh, the core qu query processor designs that we've implemented to uh, evaluate joins in the system. So I'll start by telling you my overall general position on uh, graph database management systems. So in one slide, these are read optimized analytical database management systems targeting applications where data is modeled as a graph. An example, popular applications nowadays are in recommendations, fraud detection, and management of highly heterogeneous knowledge graph and master data. So in terms of their data model, uh, the data model is called property graph model, where uh, records are modeled as a set of labeled nodes and edges and key value properties on these nodes and edges. In terms of their query language, I call these query languages broadly graph specific SQL. Uh, so here's a snippet from the Cypher query language, which is the language of the commercial leader, leader Neo4j, uh, where instead of a select from where there's a match where return, uh, indicating joins, filters, and, and projections and group bytes. So at their cores, in this sense, these are relational systems because these clauses compile down to relational operators that process sets of tuples, but they also have graph specific syntax. So for example, in this case, the arrow syntax to uh, describe joins uh, between node records. And I'll be brief here. Uh, in there's the systems in the implementations are quite different, but com, you know they will often have some graph optimized storage structures and indices. And I'll tell you a bit more about this. So despite being relational at their cores, uh, there are, I think, still some differences between graph database management systems and relational systems. And, uh, and these are the, the, the set of differences uh, and in terms of the feature sets that they optimize for. And these are the feature set that we try to optimize in Kuzu. The first is uh, the most common joins in these systems are predefined or pointer based joins between node records and their neighbors. So I call this predefined because these are predefined to the system through edges and the system can exploit this and, for example, create these join indices based on node record IDs. And this is sort of one feature that's kind of global across graph database management systems. Uh, second, a lot of the application data stored on these systems are, uh, you know, contain node records that have relationships, many to many relationships with other node records. So, and, and a lot of applications find complex patterns on these uh, nodes and, and uh, between these nodes. So these correspond to complex many to many joins. So these systems should be optimized for uh, many to many joins. And I'll talk more in this talk about this. Uh, they implement semi-structured data models. So uh, not every piece of data needs to be predefined in the schema. And especially for knowledge graph management, uh, they sort of manage your I have a data sets, so they should be competent on these types of data sets. And I think objectively, they just have better support for recursive queries, both at the query language level and the system implementation. So for example, if you had a financial transaction network where you had accounts and transfers between accounts and you had a question like this, give me all direct or indirect possible sources of money flow into Alice's account from Canada. There's a very elegant way to express this in a language like Cypher using the clean start syntax, certainly doable in SQL, but I think objectively harder. Um, uh, so from a technical point of view, the goals of Kuzu is to perfect this feature set and integrate and represent the state, art, state of the art knowledge in the field of how to be competent on, 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 on these features. So, uh, I should note that you know we are not implementing Kuzu as a prototype, so we are actually devoting serious time engineering features completely, handling edge cases, and uh, we open sourced the system two months ago under an MIT license. And in terms of its current usability features, we implement uh, the property graph data model and many clauses in in, in Cipher. And in terms of how it's installed and used, we are looking at DuckDB here for these usability features, which I think represents uh, a great example for how modern analytical database management systems should be uh, developed and used. So, um, so it's, it's an embeddable system, so it's, it runs as part of your application. So currently on your laptops, if you type pip install Kuzu, you'll be able to start uh, creating a database and, and querying. And we do implement uh, serializable transactions based on right ahead logging. An example application domain that we are targeting with Kuzu is to uh, be essentially database management system for pipelines that build graph analytics in the Python space. So if you have records, maybe in raw records in uh, some graph specific format or 
you know, common columnar formats like Parquet and Arrow, and you'd like to build pipelines where you want to model these records as a graph and maybe, you know, transform clean and do operations on this all using a high-level query language and push data to maybe a graph machine learning library like Python Geometric or DGL, we'd like users to use Kuzu for, for this purpose. So this is one application domain that, that we're targeting. Uh, I'll be brief on this slide. Uh, in terms of its performance features, we uh, are kind of follow the principles of uh, many principal columnar, um, you know, read optimized systems. So we have, for example, columnar storage, uh, columnar uh, CSR based join indices. So this is a very popular columnar format, compressed columnar format to store graphs. Uh, we have disk versions of that. Uh, it's a vectorized system, but we also have several sort of optimizations that I'll talk about, like factorization and novel join algorithms. Uh, and in the rest of the talk, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be talking about these. All right, so let me tell you about the joint processing and how joint processing happens in Kuzu. So when designing the query processor of, uh, uh, and the joint operators of Kuzu, we had three design goals in mind. The first is we wanted to optimize the system for many to many joints, which by their nature are growing. And we wanted to apply a particular technique called factorization to compress these results. And I'll, I'll tell you more about this. Um, Second is we always wanted to perform sequential scans because uh, it's a disk-based system. And this might be surprising to some, but this is not the common wisdom across graph database management systems, which use index nested loop join type of operators, which lead to non-sequential scans. But we wanted to behave more similar to uh, hash joins and which are common uh, wisdom in, in relational systems. And we also wanted to avoid full scans of uh, disk files uh, when possible. And I'll tell you sort of one by one how we went about achieving these. So I'll, uh, let me tell you about uh, factorization. So consider this two path query here where we are asking for two paths where the middle node has this Liz, the, maybe this is a financial account that's owned by Liz and you're asking for the you know, money flows that Liz this facil facilitates. And on the right, I'm here showing you two maybe um, um, accounts owned by Liz, sorry. Uh, L1 and L2, each with 100 incoming edges and 100 outgoing edges. So in existing systems, in, during query processing, uh, because of the nature of the query and the, the relationships, um, you know, existing systems which use flat representations to represent intermediate relations would need to generate, maybe in chunks, a relation that looks like this with uh, 20,000 tuples. And... Um, but this table, if, if, you, if, if you look at it and if you look at the query, is actually highly compressible if you represent it the same tuples as unions of Cartesian products. So the first 10,000 tuples where L1 is part of, for example, could be represented as L1 list for BMB that name, Cartesian product with 100 incoming edges, Cartesian product with 100 outgoing edges, and similarly for the second 10,000. And tuples. So factorization is this idea of essentially representing intermediate relations uh, using unions of Cartesian products. And this is a technique pioneered by Dan Altano. And in his series of uh, primarily theoretical papers, Dan has, and, and, and this work has really nailed down the principles of how a system can just look at the query and uh, look at the dependency in the query and exploit conditional independences statically during compilation time to find good factorization structure. So I'm not going to go through the principles, but I hope in this case, it's clear that, that once B is fixed to a single record, L1 and this, that all the A's and C's are conditionally independent because there's no dependency between A and C in this, in this two path query. So the way we have integrated factorization in Kuzu is uh, in standard vectorized query processors, operators pass a single group of vectors between each other. In Kuzu, we pass multiple factorized groups of Vectors. So, for example, um, the uh, intermediate relation from the, the, the previous slide could be represented with three factorized groups, one for B and B that name, one for A values and one for C values. And at any point in time, each vector group could either represent a single tuple or a set of tuples. So in this case, uh, if it's a single tuple, we call it flat or it uh, represents a set of values, in which case it's unflat. Um, which we sort of uh, understand or mark through this one field associated to the vector group. Uh, so at this point, this represents the first 10,000 tuples in the previous relation. 
where the meaning of passing these three vector groups to an operator means that there's 10,000 tuples that are being passed, L1 list, Cartesian product with 100 incoming A's and 100 C values. Uh, and I'd like to put in a, put a plug in for my PhD student, Amin here, who is on the academic job market. Uh, this was his design, which he, we published in VLDB 2021 on a prior system that we were developing in my group. And uh, we kind of directly adopted it in, in Kuzu. For the second and third design goals of performing sequential scans and avoiding full scans, we started with standard hash joins, uh, which get you sequential scans. And to avoid full scans when possible, we use side-based information passing. This is actually a technique that we had presented last year in CIDR on a work we did in DuckDB, uh, but it wasn't factorized. And the kind of the core technical meat of this paper was on how to integrate factorization with this technique. And I'll tell you, and particularly the challenges that we had in achieving a large set of factor, uh, uh, factorization structures. And, and we described two join operators, S join and ASP join that achieve our three design goals plus achieves a large set of factorization structures. So let me start with S join, which is the simpler uh, join algorithm or modified hash join algorithm, which passes uh, essentially a, a semi-join filter sideways from the build side to the probe side. So let me demonstrate this on a simpler query. So this is a one-hop query. I've simplified the previous query where we're only looking at the, essentially the IDs of Liz's outgoing neighbors. So the way you could be would pro process this with an S-join operator is that I'll assume that the right side, the scan of account B is the build side. So with scan and find this account, suppose there's only one and that's seven uh, with ID seven and name list and the hash table as usual. At this point, we know exactly what are the records or the edges, transfer edges that needs to be scanned from the left sides, which will pass as a semi-joint filter to the left. Now, because we have CSR structures, we can scan data in factorized form, all outgoing edges of seven, uh, but only the part that's relevant. So this is kind of used as a zone map to skip over uh, pages uh, of this transfer uh, edge file. And it's passed and we can join seven with Liz all in factorized form. So this achieves the three design goals. But it, there are actually cases where if you wanted to keep this factorization structure, but instead wanted to join with C.IDs where you can't really uh, keep the same factorization structures, then you'd have to flatten C.IDs. Uh, so let me demonstrate this problem. So this, uh, this is why we designed the second uh, hash, modified hash join operator. So in our previous example, this is the back to the two, two hop query. Uh, the, our desired factorization structure was this. We wanted to keep the Bs flat. They need to be flat so we can factor out As and Cs. So we wanted to keep As and Cs unflat. Uh, but the problem is if you had only S join operator that passes essentially information from build side to the probe side. Um, so suppose there was a subplan producing B that ID with a set of factorized C that IDs and you wanted to join those C that IDs with name. Uh, because we need to flatten the C that I, uh, because uh, at this point we can pass the information and know exactly which C that names are needed, 107, 5, and 15. But because we also need to perform a join on those, we need to create a hash table out of those, which means we need to flatten them, which means we kind of lose our factorization structure. So to address this, we have a second uh, modified hash join operator, which is called ASP join, that's got three phases instead of two phases. And in this operator, we essentially scan the probe sites first and write those tuples to a temporary buffer. So we call this the accumulate phase. So we'll do and uh, generate these factorized tuples, seven, bit 100, seven, five, and 15. That gives us the information to pass to avoid full scan of c.name and pass it to the build site. So this build site, we are going to read the c.name file and create a hash table for five, 15, and 107. And then we'll re-scan the temporary buffer in that factorized form. So in the probe phase, we can now attach uh, essentially the names of 107, 5, and 15 to this factorized uh, factorized uh, set of set of values. Um, so again, this achieves an, uh, the three design goals that I described and also allows us to have a larger set of factorization structures. 
So this is my final slide, just an example micro benchmark experiment to show you the behavior of uh, ASB joint and S joint based uh, operators. And, and primarily, you know, as you can see, we have several overheads of writing to a temporary buffer, rescanning, uh, creating cache tables and semi-joint filters. But the overall sort of point is that this is kind of robust and the, getting the benefits of factorization in many of these path queries uh, are actually, it pays off. So here, what I'm showing you is the performance of Kuzu, which implements ASP joins with a configuration of Kuzu that doesn't do any hash join operations. But, yeah, last slide. Uh, but does index group join based processing. So this is kind of simulate what a graph database management system that implements factorization, but doesn't implement, uh, implement or join operators would behave like. And when the selectivity, so there's a selectivity in the middle node, when the selectivity is very low, index nested group joins do very well. It's not very robust as the selectivity increases because of the non-sequential scans, it kind of degrades. And as a comparison, um, Umbra is a very performance system that doesn't do factorization or have a technique to avoid full scans, so less uh, performant in, in many of these scenarios for these cases where factorization actually pays off. So there's more in the paper. I won't go through this, but I'd like to thank the team who is developing and uh, honorary members who are kind of have moved on or graduating or graduated, uh, but wrote the first lines of the code. And I'll end here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sammy.